Long before the Super Bowl rings, Joe Montana's greatness was being shaped at Notre Dame. He had already been nicknamed the comeback kid for his numerous fourth quarter heroics. But on New Year's Day 1979, Montana may have saved his greatest moment for his final game. The temperature was perilously low, and the game had nearly 40,000 no-shows, though the Irish looked pretty hot early. Montana marched the Irish 66 yards in nine plays on the team's second possession, a drive that would end with Montana taking it in himself, rolling to his right from three yards out, a missed extra point, and it was 6-0, 12-0 before the first quarter ended. But things changed quickly. Montana's body temperature started to drop, and so did his effectiveness. The Notre Dame quarterback committed three turnovers, and the Cougars would capitalize, taking a 2012 lead to the locker room at halftime. Montana was suffering from hypothermia and did not come back to the field for the start of the second half, when his team continued to struggle. Finally, trailing 34-12 late in the third quarter, Montana returned. He quickly threw his third and fourth interceptions of the game, and midway through the fourth, Montana's passing stats were 7 of 26 with four interceptions and no touchdowns. What followed would be a storybook finish for Montana and the Irish. 7.37 left in the game. Freshman Tony Belden blocked a punt which freshman Steve Sitchie took 33 yards the other way, and the special teams gave the comeback kid the chance to create one more special comeback. The Irish went for two, and Montana found Vegas Ferguson to cut the Houston lead to 34-20 with more than seven minutes to play. Notre Dame got the ball back with 5.40 on the clock, and Montana engineered a 61-yard drive, ending with him going around the left side for another touchdown and setting up another two-point try. Montana looked like he might have to run it in for two until seeing Chris Haynes get open. All of a sudden, the Irish had pulled to within just six points at 34-28. Houston would do all it could to keep the ball, but after a fourth and one failed at the 29, Joe Montana got the ball back with 28 seconds to play. In a calm but masterful fashion, Montana led his team toward the end zone. First with an 11-yard run of his own, then with a 10-yard pass to his wide receiver, Chris Haynes. On first and goal, Montana's pass for Haynes was incomplete, leaving two seconds on the clock. In the huddle, Montana asked his buddy if he could beat his man again. Haynes said he could, so they ran the same play. He's dropping back. He looks for the end zone. He throws it. It is incomplete. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. It was caught at the near corner. The score is tied at 34 and 34. The clock has run out. But Notre Dame still needed an extra point to win the game and had not kicked one all day, which put the pressure on Dallas native Joe Eunice. He kicked one through but stopped the celebration. Notre Dame had jumped before the snap, and Eunice had to try again from 25 yards away. But he was as solid as the ice throughout the stadium, and Notre Dame would win 35-34. It's hard to believe that Joe Montana was never an All-American in college, but he was certainly all-world to Notre Dame where he laid the foundation for becoming one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game at any level.